Welcome to Excel for Beginners. In this tutorial, I'll show you everything you need to know to get started using Microsoft Excel with confidence. Let's get started. Once you open Excel, you're presented with a few options. Along the top of the page, you can choose a blank workbook, as well as tutorials or pre-made templates. If we click on the More Templates link, you can see things like Household Monthly Budget, Weekly Chore Schedule, and more. The templates are a great way to hit the ground running if you have a specific task in mind. When you click on one, I'll select Personal Monthly Budget, for example, you'll see a summary and then you can download it for free from Microsoft. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll begin with a blank worksheet. First, I'm going to zoom in the page a little so the worksheet is a little easier to read for those of you who are watching this video on your mobile device. At the bottom right of Excel, you'll see a slider with a minus and plus sign at either end. Let's bump it up to 200%. I'm not as young as I used to be and I need a little more magnification. Okay, let's move around some key areas you'll need to know. At the top of the page, you'll see what are called tabs. And the area below each tab is called the ribbon. If we click on the tabs, we'll see that the ribbon changes. Each tab and its associated ribbon have related functionality. If you look even closer, you'll see that some of the items in the ribbon have a little arrow icon at the bottom right. This allows you to gain access to even more functionality. Let's click on the one near the number area. As you can see, there are other options for number formatting, alignment, and more. The Home tab has the most commonly used functionality, and that's where we'll spend the majority of our time in this video. Let's look at the main worksheet area. This is made of columns which are labeled A and onward. For the 2010 version of Excel, you can have over 16,000 columns. You may ask, how can you have over 16,000 columns when the alphabet only has 26 letters? Good question. After Z, the columns will be named with two letters. So the first column after Z would be AA, then AB, AC, and so on. And now we'll look at the rows, which are labeled with numbers. We can have over 1 million rows. And each box on your worksheet is called a cell, and each one has a name. If we click here, this one would be called D5, which means column D and row 5. It's kind of like the old board game, Battleship. You can also name a group of cells. This is called a range. For example, if I highlight this group of cells, the name of the range would refer to the top left to the bottom right. This would be called E4 to H10 or E4 through H10. The reason each cell has a name is that you'll need the names of cells to perform tasks like calculations. Moving up, right below the ribbon, you'll see what looks like a browser address bar. In Excel, it's called the formula bar. Whenever you select a cell, you can see what's in the cell. This can be text or formulas. And you can use the formula bar to edit formulas and text. All right, let's begin building our first report. I'm going to create a port for a fictional used car dealership. Let's start with the first column heading, inventory number and we'll place it in cell B4. Now notice if you click enter, the cell below it will highlight because Excel believes that you will fill in the cell below it. Whenever you enter data into a cell and click enter, it will advance to the cell below it. However, if you want to enter information column by column, you can use tab or the right arrow after you add the information to a cell and want to move to the next one. You'll notice that I started the inventory heading in cell B4 and it filled up cell C4. In fact, it did not because you'll see that if I click on cell C4, it shows nothing in the formula bar. Now, if you were paying attention, you'll see that I made a typo in the column heading. If you were to simply click on a cell and start typing, you will overwrite or replace whatever's in the cell. However, if you double click on the cell, you will enter editing mode. 
I can now use the arrow keys or my mouse to move to the point to fix my spelling error. Alternatively, you can select the cell and edit it in the formula bar. So let's do the next cell and call this year. Notice how the inventory number heading is now chopped off. Don't worry, if you click on cell B4 and look in the formula bar, you can see that it's still there. Next, I will add a few more columns. Brand, Model, Wholesale Price, and Retail Price. As you can see, the columns aren't wide enough for the headings, and there's a couple of ways we can fix this. The first is to hover over the line between the column headings until you see a double-sided arrow, and then left-click and hold and drag to widen the column. Or you can highlight all of the columns and find one of the lines between the cells. Once you see the double-sided arrow, double-click your mouse, and it will automatically widen the columns to fit the content. However, as you can see, it just widens them to the exact width of our headings. I'm going to widen a few of the heading columns a little more because I know the brand and models of the cars will be wider than this. Now let's enter some data for this report. First I'll make up some inventory numbers. As you can see we have the inventory numbers increasing by one each row. Excel sees this too, so here's a trick to make data entry easier. If you highlight the first two inventory numbers by clicking on the first then holding the left mouse button down and highlighting the next one, see the little square in the bottom right? You can drag it down by holding the left mouse button and it will predict the next values. Pretty neat, huh? Excel is usually pretty good at this and can do it for other things like dates. Let me show you. I'll type in some month names. January, February, and then I'll highlight them, and then drag down and it enters the following months for me. Okay, let me get rid of the months. The easy way to do this is to highlight the cells, and then press delete. Alright, let's get back to our report. Let me speed things up while I type in some sample information. Okay, let's start formatting this report so it looks a little more professional. We'll begin by centering the inventory numbers. To do this, we'll highlight the cells, and then go up to the ribbon and click on the Center Justification button. You can see that there is also an option to align left or to align right the text. We'll do the same for the year and the two pricing columns. We can actually do them all at once by highlighting the range of values under the year heading, and then hold down the control key and do the same with the pricing columns. We can now select the center align option from the ribbon. Another way to apply formatting like alignment to your data is to right click and then choose the format cells option. And you'll get a dialog box with tabs featuring a number of options including number, alignment, font, and more. Now let's turn those prices into a format that looks like prices. We'll highlight the cells again by holding down the left mouse button while we select the other cells. And then we'll go to the number area of the ribbon and click the dollar sign. This will provide currency in accounting format. I'm not really a fan of the accounting format because how the dollar sign is left justified. I'm going to highlight the pricing cells and change to currency format from the drop down list. Now this report is starting to look better. Let's deal with the headings. We're going to center the headings by highlighting the headings and clicking the center alignment button in the ribbon. Now if you look to the left you can see a paint can. That's the fill color for the cell. So let's highlight the heading cells in blue. And now we'll make the text white and bold. Oh, I've forgotten to give this report a title. 
Let's go with Lemon Motors. If you want to center the title above your work, we can use Merge and Center. Start by clicking on the B2 cell, and then hold the left mouse button and drag to cell G2 so that the width of the highlighted area is the same width as the headings below it. Then go up to the ribbon and click Merge and Center. This will merge the six columns into one for that row. I will then increase the font size to 14, change the font color to blue, and finally, I'll make the font weight bold. So we've got a basic worksheet now. However, the information is pretty basic at this point. Let's add some information that would be more useful to the owner of Lemon Motors. First, they'll want to know the profit they hope to make per car. So let's add a new heading called Profit. I want to make sure it looks like the other headings and not have to redo the font color, bold, and cell fill. So I'm going to copy the retail price heading and paste it right beside it. This is where you could use a keyboard shortcut, Control plus C in the retail price heading to copy and then Control plus V to paste into the next column. Or you can highlight the cell and drag. Whatever option you choose, all you have to do is change the title from Retail Price to Profit. This time I'm going to highlight the cell and use the formula bar to change the text from Retail Price to Profit. Now we're ready to do our first simple formula. We'll begin by clicking on the first row under the Profit heading. We'll then start with the equal sign, which means this cell will equal. This tells Excel that this will be a formula. We know that the profit is the retail price in cell G5 minus the wholesale price in F5. Do you notice as you define the cells in the formula they highlight? Now click enter and we have our first calculation completed. The Ferrari has a profit of $12,700. Now we want to repeat the formula for each row below, but don't worry, we don't have to do it again for every row. We have a few options. We can highlight the first row and type Control plus C to copy, and then highlight the remaining rows and type Control plus V to paste. Or you can highlight the first formula, and then drag from the little box in the bottom right corner of the cell to the rest of the rows. Or you can highlight the cell that the first formula is in, look for the little box in the bottom right corner of the cell, and double click. And it will automatically complete the formula for the rest of the rows. You may have noticed that our title is no longer centered because we've added an extra column for the profits, so let's fix that. I will highlight the cell that the title is in and click the Merge and Center button. This will undo the Merge and Center so that you can do a new one that adds the extra column. So now, I will highlight the cell that the title is in and then drag to the width of the headings below. Now we'll click on the Merge and Center button and now the title is centered above all the columns. Let me speed things up as I add a few more cars to the list so we have a little more data to work with. One of the keys of any good report is presenting the information in a logical and useful manner. We will begin with some easy ways to sort the information. Let's say you want to have your inventory report display items in a certain order. For example, you may want to list the cars with the highest profit first. We would select the first record under the profit heading and then click the data tab and then click the sort Z to A, which means sorting from largest to smallest. If we chose A to Z, we would be sorting from smallest to largest. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice that even if we are sorting by a specific column, Excel will update the entire row so you don't have to worry about your data getting mixed up. Next, you may want to sort by model year from the oldest to the newest. This would be A to Z, smallest to largest. When you're working with reports, 
Some other data may not be as important as others. This is where we want to filter our data. When you filter the data, you can hide some information from view so that you can focus on the key information that is most important to you. To begin, we'll highlight the headings and click on the Data tab, and then select the Filter button on the ribbon. You'll notice that there are now drop-down lists on each of the headings. If you click on any of them, you'll see all the possible values that have been entered in the column under that particular heading. Let's say we only want to see cars that are 2010 or newer. We can click on the drop-down list on the year heading, and then we can unselect all of the years older than 2010. But don't worry, when you perform a filter, the data isn't gone forever. It's only hidden. If you look at the rows, you can see that the number is no longer sequential. The rows that were filtered out are the ones that are hidden. To unfilter your data, you can click Select All in the heading that you originally defined the filter. The other option would be to simply click on the Filter button on the ribbon to turn off filtering entirely. Another idea for filtering for the owner of Lemmer Motors might be to only show cars with a profit of more than $5,000. Even with this small list, it would take some effort to deselect all the records you don't want to see. Luckily, there's an option that is much quicker that you can use, and it's called Number Filters. You can then choose to only show values greater than or equal to 5,000. This is especially helpful when you have a large amount of data. To undo this filter, you can click the Clear Filter from Profit option in the column heading where you defined your filter. Or again, you can simply click on the Filter button on the ribbon to turn off filtering entirely. Earlier in the video, we created our first simple formula. This was calculating the profit per vehicle. This was calculated by subtracting the wholesale price from the retail price. Now that we know the potential profit of each car, the owner of Lemon Motors would probably like to know the total potential profit of all the cars in their inventory. There are a number of ways to do this. The first would be to manually type the profit of every car in a formula. Clearly, this is not ideal if you have a large number of entries. The second is to use the sum formula. This is where you'd use a range of cells that we learned about earlier in the video. Or you could start the sum formula with equals, sum, opening bracket, and then use your mouse to drag to select the cells and click enter. However, the easiest is to use the auto sum function which is located near the top right of the ribbon under the Home tab. Excel is pretty accurate at predicting what you want to calculate the sum of, but does sometimes get things wrong, so it's good to know the other ways to calculate sum. Here's a neat trick if you want to do a quick sum calculation, but don't need it on your report. You can highlight the cells and look near the bottom of the worksheet, and you'll see the number of items selected and their total. So now we know the total potential profit of the dealership of all the cars were sold at the retail price. As you can see, it's becoming more difficult to enter car information because our headings scroll out of view. I'm going to show you a way to keep track of what heading you are entering your information under when you have more rows and your titles are no longer in view. To make sure you always have your column headings visible, you can use the freeze panes functionality. To do this, we'll highlight the first row of data. Then we'll go to the View tab and click Freeze Panes, and then Freeze Panes again. This will freeze all panes above this row so it looks like the data is scrolling underneath the headings. Now we can have a super long list of cars and we'll always know under which heading we are entering our information. Next, let's add some executive summary values that will allow the owner of Lemon Motors to quickly see a snapshot of the car inventory data. I'm going to create some space in between the title and the report information. To do this, I'm going to insert some rows. This is super simple. We'll click on the row above the headings, and then right-click and select Insert. I'll do this a couple more times because there are three values I want to add. 
You can do the same thing for columns as well. Okay, back to our executive summary. We're gonna display the values for the average profit per car, car with the most profit, car with the least profit. As I enter the name average in the cell, you can see that it has the same formatting as the title. I do like the bold blue text, but not the font size. So we'll change that to the same size as the heading fonts. We can check what this is by highlighting one of the heading cells and looking in the ribbon where we can see that the font size is 11. I'll make the change and add the remaining labels and then adjust the font size. To calculate the average, we'll use equals, average, opening bracket, and then we'll highlight the range of profit cells and click enter. We now know the average profit per vehicle is almost $6,900. Next we want to know the vehicle with the highest profit. For this we'd use the max formula, which would be equals, max, opening bracket, and again, we'll highlight the profit fields and click enter. So we now know that the most profitable vehicle is $15,500. And if we look through our data, we can see it's the Lamborghini. And finally, we'll find the vehicle with the lowest profit. In this case, we'd use the min formula, which is equals min and the opening bracket. And once again, we'll highlight the range of profit fields and click enter. The vehicle with the lowest profit of $1,800 is the Hyundai Elantra. Excel offers a wide number of formulas that you can use. If you click on the formulas tab, you can see formulas organized into a wide variety of different applications, financial, date, and time, and many more. And if you hold your mouse over any formula, a tooltip will pop up with the syntax for the formula and a brief description. If you're more of a visual person, conditional formatting can be used to highlight data using colors instead of using sorting or filtering. Let's look at the profit column and highlight the cells. We will then go to conditional formatting in the Home tab and we'll select color scales. We'll select this one as it'll highlight the highest profit car in green and color code each entry to the lowest profit in red. As you can see, it's almost like a temperature gauge for the most profitable to least profitable car. You can use conditional formatting in a number of ways based on any criteria you can think of. I think this is probably a good point to end this video. I'm hoping you're gaining more and more confidence using Excel. If you're able to pick up the skills in this video, give yourself a pat on the back because you now have more skills than the average Excel user. If you find my videos helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps show my videos to more people on YouTube who are looking to upgrade their Excel skills. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing.